Hello, and in this video, we are going to explore the concept of degrees of freedom within a solid. We have already explored in the text the number of degrees of freedom, places I can put energy, for an ideal gas. For an ideal gas, there were in fact three degrees of freedom, as I could either put energy into motion in the x direction, motion in the y direction, or motion in the z direction. So three places I can put energy, three degrees of freedom. What about in a solid? In a solid, the atoms are not free to move around. Where can I put the energy in this case? I can clearly add energy to a solid. I can put it over a flame. What are the different microscopic places, different degrees of freedom that are possible in a solid? We are going to consider the Einsteinian solid where we treat each atom as connected to its neighbors in three dimensions by springs. In an Einsteinian solid, the atoms can't move anywhere, but they can vibrate on these springs that we're using to represent the atomic bonds. You might think there are three bonds, so there are three places I can put energy. I could put it in any of the three bonds. And this is a very reasonable assumption, but not quite right. In fact, there are six degrees of freedom in a solid. There are two for each bond, not just one. So when I add energy to a vibrating bond in a solid, there are two places I can put it. I can make the vibrations larger, increase their amplitude, or I can make it vibrate more quickly. So thus there are actually two degrees of freedom per bond in a three-dimensional solid. And therefore, in a 3D solid, there are two degrees of freedom per bond, size of vibration and speed of vibration, times three bonds, gives us a total of six degrees of freedom for a three-dimensional Einsteinian solid. So in summary on degrees of freedom, what you're looking at are the number of places within the individual atoms you can put energy. For an ideal gas, there are three places. I can put energy either into the motion in the x direction, motion in the y direction, or I could put energy into motion in the z direction. And these three directions, as we've been discussing since the beginning of the class, are independent. For an atom in a solid, however, there are actually two degrees of freedom per bond. One for the size of the vibration, and one for the speed of the vibrations. So for a standard solid in three dimensions, where each atom has three independent bonds, one in X, one in Y, and one in Z, there are three times two, or six degrees of freedom. This concludes this video.